Today we'll be creating this particular sci-fi futuristic city loop. It's gonna consist of a city, a highway, and a background city. So let's learn how to create this. In our default scene, we're gonna be using geometry nodes. So we're gonna bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we can press this plus icon to create a new geometry node tree and the set will keep the default cube. We need this to be distributed on a grid of points. So we'll search for a grid. So press shift A and search for grid and plug the mesh into the geometry. Now, clearly it's way too small for a city. So I'm just gonna increase the size to something like five on both the X and the Y axis. After which I need points to be distributed in this plane. So I'll press shift A and search for a distribute points on faces node and plug that in. And we're gonna change it from random to poison disk so that we can specify the minimum distance between the points. And by increasing that, we get fewer points. Now, after increasing the distance min, I want to actually instance this cube onto each of these points. So I'll press shift A and search for an instance on points node and plug that in right here. And for the instance, I'm going to plug in our group input, which is the cube. Now, right now, all of the cubes are way too large and of the exact same size. So we can search for a random value node and use this to control the scale. However, I want all of the buildings to remain square. So I'm going to have to use the same value for the X and the Y. And to do that, I'll just press shift A and search for a combine X, Y, Z node and use the output from this random value on both the X and the Y axes. Then I can plug this value into the scale. However, they're going to be squashed down on the Z because the Z value is still zero. To get a random value on the Z, I'm going to take this random value node, press shift D and just plug that into the Z value. But I'm going to go ahead and change the seed value for this to something random and then play around with the max value. Now you could be happy with your city as is, or you can play around with the max value on the X and the Y to make the buildings a little thinner and eventually just settle down on whatever values you want. When you're happy with it, you can press shift A and search for a set material node so that we don't have to come back to geometry nodes later on. And for that, we'll just select the default material as of now. And that's all there is for the geometry node section. Next, we can actually set up our scene so that we can place our highway properly. For our scene setup, we'll first set all of our defaults, which is switching on our bloom and screen space reflections then going to our output properties, changing the frame to 30 frames per second. The end frame can be 150 so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be whatever you want it to be. File format, I'm going to keep it as FFmpeg video with an encoding set from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality of Perceptry lossless. Once you're done with that, press zero to go into your camera view and press N on your keypad to open up this side panel. Switch it to the view tab and go down to the view lock and camera to view. So now you can actually move around how you would generally move your viewport display and the camera moves along with it. So just set up your camera to some angle that you want. Let's say maybe I'll go with something like this. And just to not see anything outside my camera view, I'll go and select my camera by selecting the outline or selecting it from the outline or over here, going to the camera properties, going down to viewport display and then increasing passport out all the way to one. Now I can just go ahead and play around with this a little bit more till I'm happy with the positioning. I'm going to keep the rotation on the X to 90 as well and just bring it down on the Z to something like that. I might change this around towards the end. Next up, I want a ground plane. So I'll press shift A and search for a plane and just scale that up as well by pressing S and bringing it up quite a bit. Now I can take my geometry node object, change the name over here so that I don't get confused and call this main city and press Alt D to create a linked duplicate. Press shift Z so that it doesn't move on the Z axis and just bring it over to this other side. And of course you can scale it up if you want. You can play around with it as you please. I might make a few changes later on, but essentially it's just moving it over to the edge so that you have something on the other side as well. That's pretty much all there is for our scene setup. So you can press N and just de-check camera to view so that you don't accidentally move the camera once you have that set up. Next, we have to create the actual pathway. So we can press shift A and search for a curved circle and just scale it up till you see it and then grab it on the Z axis by pressing GZ and moving it up. Then you can go to the actual curve properties over here, increase the resolution to 64 so that it becomes really nice and smooth. Expand the geometry tab and increase the bevel depth till you get something fairly round and nice. And also increase the bevel depth resolution as well to the max that it goes, which is 32. Now this is going to be a perfect half pipe but we want it to be a little squished. So I'm just going to press S Z and bring it down to make it nice and squished. And that should be all right. Then I'm going to press zero to go out of my camera view and 
press one to go into the front view, after which I can switch on transparency by pressing this button. And I want to remove all of the top vertices. Now you can't do that while it's a curve. So I'm going to have to click object convert to mesh. Now that it's a mesh, I can press tab to go into the edit mode and just press B for box select and select all of these top vertices and press X delete faces. Now when I press tab to go back into object mode and switch off transparency and go to my camera view by pressing zero, you can see how the curve is present. For this curve, I'll also click on object, shade smooth and give it its own material by going to the material tab over here and pressing new. With this, we can actually start off the texturing for all of the different materials. So first off, we'll change our viewport display to render so that we can actually see the changes that we make. And we can switch the geometry node window from geometry nodes to the shader editor. Now we have the ring selected with material 001. We'll change the name to rings and we'll play around with it. Or we can call it highway because it essentially is going to look like the highway. Here's where we're going to learn a few techniques that I find really useful. First thing is using a noise texture to actually create those random streaks that you see as the fast moving cars. With the node wrangler switch on, you can control shift click it to actually preview what the no noise texture currently looks like. And this is what we have. Clearly it doesn't look too good yet. So with the node wrangler, press control T to add in a texture coordinate and mapping nodes, after which we can switch from generated to object. And you should start seeing a little bit of the noise texture come in. Now, we can press shift A to search for a color ramp so that we have better control. Plug that in after the noise texture and just bring the black in and the white in so that we have a little better contrast. Now, all you have to do is scale it down on the X and the Y by shift click and drag so that both of them move together and change it down to something like 0.1 and then increase the Z value so that we get these nice streaks. Now, if you actually rotate it on the Z axis, you should be able to see the rotation. Now, if you feel like you're seeing enough of the streaks rotating well and good. If you feel like you want the streaks to be more prominent, you can start increasing the value of the X and the Y to maybe something like 0 0.2 and you'll be able to see the streaks move even more. But the smaller you make the X and Y values, the longer each streak will be. And the larger you make the X and Y values, the shorter each streak will be. So I'm going to keep it at 0 0.1 itself because that looks fine for what I want to do. Now, because this is a highway, cars on the left move in one direction, cars on the right move in a different direction. Where I'm from, cars always move forward on the left side of the road. So we have to make this Z value change based on whether it's on the left side of this object or the right side of this object. So first we have to isolate the left and the right sides. To do that, we can press shift A and search for a gradient texture and then control shift click it so that we can actually see what the gradient looks like and clearly the gradient is random and not what we want at all so first thing is press control t so that we get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and switch it from generated to object so that we have it going right down the center next we can change it from linear to spherical so that it goes from the center outward. And now you can already start seeing how we're getting the left and the right sides of the road separated, but we can do much better. The first thing is pressing shift and searching for a color ramp. Of course, you can use a greater than node as well. And just changing this from linear to constant and bringing the white in just like that so that it's a direct fall off. After which we can shift select all of the values on the scale and start dragging it in so that we get more and more areas white. So we can go roughly halfway. To make sure that you're perfectly halfway, you can go and press seven and just take a look and make sure that it seems halfway. So I think a value of 9.3 or 9.2 is halfway for me. So once you have that set up, we need to control the rotation based on this particular output of this color ramp. So we can select these, move these on top. And remember this mapping node Z rotation is what was controlling the motion of these streaks. So if we control shift click these streaks, you see moving the Z in the positive direction makes it move forward and moving it in the negative direction makes it move backward. So essentially we can just use the same value, but positive and negative for two different mapping nodes. So we'll move the texture coordinate back, take this mapping node, press shift D to duplicate it and then connect the same object into the vector. And now press shift A and search for a value node and plug this into a combined XYZ because the value gives out a single value, but we need a vector for the rotation. So we press shift A and search for a combined XYZ node, plug this value into the Z value and plug this into the rotation of the mapping node. And before we plug the exact same thing into the rotation of the second mapping node, we can press shift A and search for a math node, switch it over to multiply and keep the second value as minus one. And for the first value, we can use the same value from our value node and plug this into a combined XYZ node. So select this shift D, bring this down, plug this in and plug this into the rotation. So now we need to tell this noise texture to use 
this mapping node in case of the left side of this road and this mapping node for the right side. To do that, we can search for a mix node and change it from float to vector and just drop that in over here, connect this mapping node to this mix node. And for the factor, we use the output of this color ramp. So that way, because it's black or white, whatever was black will use the value from this mapping node, whatever was white will use the mapping from this value node. So if you actually play around with the value node over here, you can see how everything seems to be moving forward towards the left and everything seems to be moving backward towards the right. And that is exactly the kind of streaks that we were trying to create. Hopefully you can see that in this particular animation. Now we can add in a driver for this or keyframes for this single value while we do the animation to get it to look how we want. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and just decrease the black even more, increase the white as well, and play around with the scale of this noise texture and things like that, just to get the streaks looking the way I want it to. Maybe just increase the scale on the Z axis as well and just bring the black in. And once you're happy with that, you're going to be using this output as the alpha value of the principal BSDF. So control shift clicking the principal BSDF shows what we have. And right now it's not going to be actually see through because we have to go down to our material property settings and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. Once we do that, it actually does become see through and you can still see the streaks, but because they're black, they're mostly not visible at the moment. So to change that, we have to use this in the emission strength as well and change the emission color. We'll change the color soon, but first we'll play around with the strength and just keep this color at a bright white. To make everything actually glow, we can press shift A and search for a math node, switch it over from add to multiply and multiply the second value by a really large number. So maybe something like 20 and plug it into the emission strength right there. So now you should be able to see the glow happen. If you want even more glow, just keep increasing the value and it'll start glowing even more. Now we have to play with the actual color of this emission. Cars would generally have yellowish lights, maybe a bit of red for the brakes and things like that. So we'll press shift A and search for a noise texture and plug the color into a color ramp. And in this color ramp, we'll change this first color to a nice yellowish color, maybe something like that. And this second color can be a more reddish color. We can bring this reddish value in. And for the vector of this noise texture, we can use the same output from this mix node so that the colors also move around with the streaks. Now we can plug this color into our emission color in the principal BSDF to see what we have. Now I don't see enough of the red, so I'm just going to start bringing the red in a little bit and maybe increasing the scale as well or reducing it till I'm happy with the actual distribution. And I think this will do for now. So if I just switch off overlays, this is what it looks like. And that seems all right for now. Next, we'll start off with the material of our main city. So for that, all I'm going to do is just increase the metallicness quite a bit, and that'll help add in these nice reflections. And for the roughness, I'll press Shift A and search for a Voronoi node and press Control T with the node wrangler switch on to get texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Switch over from generated to window and switch this from Euclidean to Chebyshev so that we get nice squares. To get the actual squares, I'm going to make the randomness down to zero. Now, if I Control Shift click it to actually preview it, this is what it looks like. I'm going to press Shift A and search for a color ramp node. Place it here and just switch the color ramp so that we have the squares as white. And if we just bring in the black, we get it to look something like that. Now, because we're using window coordinates, it uses the actual size of the window, which has an aspect ratio of 1920 by 1080. So you're going to have to scale it on the X axis by that value to actually make it perfect squares, which is 1.778 or essentially just your output aspect ratio 1920 divided by 1080. Next, Play around with the scales so that you get a lot more of them. So that seems fine. And I'm just going to bring these in a little bit. So that seems all right for me. And now I'm going to plug this into my roughness and control shift click the principal to PSDF. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this black to a slightly less dark value. So maybe 0.2 so that it's not completely reflective. And even the white, I'm going to reduce down to something like 0.7, just so that it's not completely non-reflective either. Then I can go to the world properties over here and just reduce this down to black initially to see what we have. And this is all right, although not exactly what we want. So we'll take the light and just press G to grab it and move it around till we're a bit more happy with the positioning. So for now, I'm just going to press G Y and just bring it this side. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the light properties and increase the radius as well so that it's not that sharp. 
while also increasing the power to maybe 10,000. So I have a huge radius of 75 so that even the buildings at the back are also lit and a power of 10,000. After that, again, I'm going to select the main city object. I'm also going to change the material name from material to buildings. And for the actual base color, I'm going to give it a slightly bluish hue just to contrast with the orange and yellow colors from our highway. Next, I'm going to select our plane, which is our ground, add in a new material, call it ground, and just reduce the base color to a very dark color, increase the metallicness, reduce the roughness, and just play around with it till you're happy with what you have. After which we can finally play around with the world background. So we can change from object to world and play around with its colors. So we'll press shift A and search for a noise texture and control T to get in a texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And we'll change the mapping type from point to texture so that we can actually rotate it around and plug this color into a color ramp. So color ramp factor and plug this into the color of the background. The first thing that I'm going to do is bring the black in quite a bit, bring the white in as well and change this white from a white to a bluish color. After which I'm going to go ahead and reduce the scale on the X to zero and the Y to zero as well. So that we have these nice streaks. You can play around with the scale and things like that. And then I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis by a bit so that the streaks are nice and rotated. And I'm going to go ahead and just bring this value down. I'm going to play around with it till I'm happy with what I get. So now that's actually all there is for this particular tutorial. You can always play around with the camera position here and there to get different locations. You can also take this main city and duplicate it a bit more to add in some more density to the background of the scene. And that's really up to you and how you want to use it. However, the last thing that I want to do is select my camera, go down to the camera properties and switch on depth of field. Now I'm going to just reduce the f-stop down to something really low and then change my focus distance till I actually focus on this region of the city. So I think that's coming in for me at around 17 meters. And I'm going to increase this f-stop to maybe 0.3 and that should be it. I might play around with the positioning of the camera a little bit and that's the version that will be available on Patreon. That's all there is for the actual texturing and scene setup. But next we actually have to do the animation. So we'll go ahead and increase our timeline by a little bit. Select our Bezier circle object that we had and switch over from world to object. And here we had a single value that was controlled controlling this particular motion. So on frame zero, we're going to keep the value at zero itself and then hover over it and tap I. Then we'll go to frame 150 and increase this value by any even multiple of pi. So the higher the multiple you go, the faster it's going to seem like the cars are moving. So I'm going to keep it at the least value, which is two pi. So write two star pi, and that would take it through one full rotation. So just hover over it and tap I. Now, when you actually play the animation, you should be able to see these move. But you see they start off slow, speed up in the middle and then slow down towards the end again. So to change that, hover down here and press T linear. And that way you get a perfectly looping, seamless animation of this particular highway going through the city. And that's all there is. Of course, you can make a few final touches such as playing around with the light radius and positioning it and all of that. But I'm going to leave all of that up to you. And with that, this is the final render. If you've watched so far, thank you so, so much for watching. I highly recommend watching other videos on my channel in case you found this useful because I release one video every single day using different techniques that can be useful in creating any motion graphics or sci-fi animations or just loops in general. So be sure to stay tuned for the next video that's going to be coming out tomorrow. And until then, keep creating and stay creative.